Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the town of Belmont in Clearwater County. And you can see we're back at it again. <laughs> we are having fires and it is pandemonium. So today we are going to work on making sure that we have enough fire breaks to ensure that our city can exist a, in, 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 a, in a fire free way, or at least in a way that the fires don't spread everywhere forever. So. There are a couple of things that we're gonna to do to, uh, to, to accomplish this. We're gonna add fire breaks, and I've also gone through and removed a mod that I've been told is problematic. Unlimited Trees Mod 1.12. And in favor of that, I have installed Unlimited Trees You Visited. So this does two things. Number one, it fixes my save time issue that I talked about in the last episode. So I was it was taking roughly 10 minutes to save the file. That's that's a problem. <laughs> uh, with the removal of that mod and the addition of Unlimited Trees Revisited, I have been able to uh, cut my save times down to about two to three seconds. So, quite the change. Uh, so, I, 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 that's that's one of the changes that we're going to make. The other one was we're going to expand uh, Belmont a bit. This is not going to be a massive community, but we are going to have some degree of, of uh, growth in the community. And that's going to really... Uh, we built this big school complex and we did that in anticipation of the growth and obviously William Bell wants some amount of growth that's why he cared about the land uh, in, in, in bringing the rail to the community <laughs> the rail <laughs> right there to the community so clearly that's gonna be some uh, some part of today's uh, build to, to make William feel that he has made a good investment um, and then finally, we're going to make a couple of changes to the regional roadway network. We're not necessarily going to fix it, but we're going to make it a little bit more true to life and add a uh, truck stop. So quite a bit we want to do today. So let's get started. And I am going to pause this because I want to check the efficacy of the changes that we make by, by actually letting this fire burn through the break and seeing if it actually prevents it from spreading further. Uh, but before we get all, to all of that, um, an eagle-eyed... Um, member of the discord server noticed that i have a problem with my policy so looking at the budget one thing is not like the rest boom right here our policies so our policies are way out of whack and i was wondering what policy i had that could be causing this and it's clearly the power usage policy we're getting a five cent per building expense to have this enacted and we had this enacted when we didn't have enough power production so I'm going to eliminate that policy and then go back in here and underneath our budget, I'm going to set everything back to 100. Uh, uh, the reason why is once I once I take that policy and, and set it back to normal, it's going to uh, our, our power utilization is going to go up and that that that's OK. We have the overhead now to do that, but um, we want to make sure we don't run out of power. So let's run this quickly and see what it does to our budget. So we should see this precipitously fall. Okay, that was ridiculous. <laughs> so now we're making 22,000 a turn, that one policy. You've always got to keep track of those, those choices that you're making because you can certainly be uh, creating a pretty bad situation inadvertently. So we've got that taken care of. Now we're good. Now we just got these fires and the fires are everywhere. We've got fires over here. We've got fires over there. Um, and uh, think, speaking of policies, one person in the Discord server mentioned that maybe I should put the lightning rods policy on. That again, costs a lot, um, but fires cost even more. So I think we are gonna en en enable that policy. And while I'm in here thinking about policies before we move forward, I did enable another mod to uh, try to help with some of our uh, traffic that we're seeing and some of our district service issues. So there were really two routes that I could go. Um, I could I could enable enhanced district services. That requires a lot of micromanagement and a lot of work behind the scenes that I didn't really want to, to bring into the build. Um, or... I could get the jelly districts or jelly <laughs> districts and basically what that does is it says if you have a district drawn and a service is inside of that district it can only operate within this district area so that's a big help here 
because it means that our police, our fire, our, uh, our cemetery, it's only going to work in this area. Now where that is less a help is over here. And in Ashland, we have a bunch of districts changing the way that our community works and looks. And then we have our city services operating on the outside. And you can see that we've got a lot of traffic here. And some of this traffic is actually our services going out this way. So that's, that's a problem. Just like this being abandoned is a problem. Let's cheat, let's cheat for a second. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so the, the problem here is, is ultimately that these services are gonna serve Belmont, but not vice versa. Um, so we are gonna have problems. I'm guessing there's a death care problem over here. I don't see one, but eventually there could be. So just something to keep an eye on. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, because these will work regionally. And there's not really a way around that that I can think of yet, short of enhancing this, the, the size of these districts. And that's not really something I'm interested in. So, um, But it will protect us over here because we had our cemetery going all the way over to Ashland. So something to be aware of. And with that, I think there's only one more mod that I'm adding to this build. And that is a, a mod that was uh, an asset rather that was created by a member of the community. So we've got these steel water towers and I'm just in love with these. This is one of my favorite parts of being a content creator is, is having people go out of their way to create really cool and unique assets like this one. So we have one that says Brownsville and another one that says Belmont. I think we're gonna add that right up here and we'll move this fire watchtower. I think we're gonna move that to a higher point, maybe the top of this hill. And then we'll add, add another one over onto this hill over here. And that should blanket our community with coverage. And while we're, while we're on it, now that we have lots of money, we should probably have fire helicopter depot over here. So we're gonna add that as well as we're adding the fire breaks. But I, I just wanted to make sure that we incorporate this into the community. This is really the sort of thing that I think people would think about when they see this city. And it's not at all abnormal to have more than one water tower in a city, even a small city. Um, so we, we had that just outside of the ground pollution area. So it should be okay. We'll run that up here. We'll, we'll make a really realistic connection, go straight up a hill. <laughs> that should work. And I'm probably gonna relocate that dump as well, uh, outside of this area, uh, maybe on one of the roads that we create once, uh, once we, we create those for our fire breaks. So to get started, I want to bring that road up and I'm thinking over here might be the way to do it. So it's a bit ugly because we have this, this area where we're dug in. I don't want it to feel totally unnatural, but it's gonna feel a little weird. So this is a very steep road. Maybe we can lower this a bit. That's not the the, the very best solution, but it, I, I think it works. And this is where I want to start our roads. So we're gonna use the roads as our fire break. So I'm gonna use Anarchy and add this here and, and notice that I have Prop Anarchy on. Need to get that off right away. And we're gonna use topography to figure out where our breaks will go. So I'm just zooming out. This break is gonna go all the way over to Ashland and I think I wanna meet up near the fire department and I want it to get high enough to get around the heads of the water. So we need to get very close to the second green line if we wanna avoid any conflicts with our river heads. And I wanna get it all the way around. I wanna connect up to the highway over here with these dirt roads. So hopefully it won't take traffic, but it will allow a, a fire access road and potentially places to add parks in the future, such as up here. And uh, the other it's the other really important component to this is I wanna clear the, the woods on either side of the roads. So uh, the other way that we could have made the fire breaks would have been to run the power lines, which we currently have running on a fairly straight trajectory on, on lowlands. We could have taken those and used those as a fire break, but we didn't, so. Um, this is what we're gonna do. I think it's gonna work just fine. So we've got our start here. 
and I'm gonna run this all the way to Ashland, trying to work my way up the mountain to get to this elevation, switchbacking, and then we're gonna run it over here. Uh, so I'm gonna do that in relative silence and time-lapse most of this, because it's not the most interesting. <laughs> I get that. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut back across because I think that it, there's no need to build on the mountain side because uh, I think we can start to, to kind of work our way through here and then go down this valley over here. And you can see there's Ashland. We are making our way down the hillside now. So I just want to check the elevation that I want to maintain. And I think here is where I'm going to cut back across and follow the topographic line again. And then we'll cut against this until we can make our connection. Now the worst part of this entire <laughs> ordeal is going to be getting down here. So what I think we're going to do is raise this up just a bit. And then I, these dirt roads that uh, I have installed don't really mesh well with the vanilla road. So we're going to just upgrade this through here. So now we're going to use our new tool that we have through the uh, the unified UI multi-network tool or network multi-tool and we're going to use our slope control just to make sure that everything lines up well. So I mentioned that this was probably one of the more problematic areas. We'll solve that and then I'm going to use move it. We will align this to the object height and that'll help a bit. There we go, that, that feels a bit more natural to me. Now we're gonna need to go through and make sure our slope uh, at key locations looks right. And sometimes when you use the, uh, the this new sloping tool, you end up with some oddball stuff like roads sinking in. I'm not gonna use this tool everywhere. I don't really care about how the slopes are so long as they're not like 13%. Like this one looks pretty significant over here. So basically, if it's above 10% or so, I'm gonna try to moderate that a bit. And then wherever it breaks, I'm gonna fix that too. And you can just see because we followed the topography, most of these are pretty darn good. So I, these, these switchbacks are probably the one place where it might get a little messy. But even nine, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll adjust it, but I'm probably a little more okay with that. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now I want to make our connection over to here. Now this one's gonna be harder, but this one's also very important. And then we're gonna make a couple of adjustments along the highway to try to improve this as well. So again, we'll look at our topo a topographic view again. Now over here, we really need to get again to that dark green line. That's going to be a tough, that's going to be a trick. I don't know that that's going to be all that straightforward. Now here's, I'm going to have a park in the future. So I want to have a nice entrance here. Um, so we're going to leave maybe a small short stretch that is straight. And then we will again begin to work our way up. Now this is gonna need a lot of work using the network multi-tool already, I can tell you that. We're going up quite a bit more, quite a bit faster on much steeper slopes. This would also need some sort of guardrail. But we are almost up where we need to be. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> we still have about 100 meters up to go. Okay, now we are where we need to be. And this is important because I want to be able to get across to the highway over here, which is in the really the dark green area. So we're gonna have a meandering road back here. And I'm sure that there would be motorcyclists just lobbying to get this paved. And then the snowmobilers would be fighting against them because this would be a perfect snowmobile trail so long as it's not paved. Same thing with ATVs, they would probably be like, this is perfect. Please do not change it. <laughs> and the dynamics 
of uh, rural planning. You, you deal with some of these things. You might get cross-country skiers is another group that is interested in this. So it's always a dynamic. And runners. Wow, this is going to be a challenge. We need to make our way up. We've got quite a ways to go. Okay, we're getting closer to the right terrain height. And at least some flat ground where we can make some elevation up. Fairly simply. Oh, I'm out of money. <laughs> we need to, to, to take advantage of some of that money that we made. There we go. That that was kind of the, the, the tour de force in getting this done. And that's not going to do a lot right now for us, but that's going to help a lot in the future. Now, we've got some stuff going on here that I want to fix. So we've got a road that is just... Uh, you know, once once you see it, you can't unsee it, so I'm going to get this slope fixed here. Ooh, I do not like what it did here, but you're going to have to work with it. So that is quite the ravine that it has dug. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's extreme. Oh, and I made it worse. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a possibility all right well let's take this further and see if i can fix it a little bit then we're gonna have to take some liberties okay well that slope is really nice now <laughs> the unfortunate thing is it took half of our landscaping out with it so we're gonna need to do a little bit of grading to get this looking a bit more reasonable So I'm okay with on one side of the road, there being quite the cut. I'm not okay with it on both. I mean, that's just a personal preference. And here we're pro there's not a lot that I can do besides just the taper this a bit. But I wouldn't want the road to fall back in on itself. Now this blasting, I could see that happening. Maybe not to this extent. But blasting to, 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 to build a smooth road does occur. Or at least it used to. But ultimately this is fixing uh, kind of a mapping error that I created earlier, so I'm, I'm gonna be okay with it. This, I'm gonna soften a bit. There we go. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on here because there's so much fire. So what we're gonna do is go through that same tool but switch over to our landscaping view. And I've done a little bit of practicing with this. And it seems like 70 is the perfect brush strength to follow the roads with to create an adequate fire break. So what I'm going to do is zoom out and just follow some of these paths. So now our highway here will act as a fire break. And now we need to do the exact same thing along our fire break. Okay, and now the moment of payoff. We're going to see if this actually works. In just a minute, I do want to, again, take a look at my slopes. <laughs> it's funny, this almost looks like a ski hill now. Um, I just want to make sure that my slopes on this new road aren't completely crazy. Some of them are going to be. I mean, that's 15. That's, that's a lot. And this would be a really interesting trip if you were going down here. It's just beautiful. You get to see some backcountry that you might not otherwise see. I mean, look at this. Oh man, this theme. I just, I can't say enough about how beautiful it is. And someday this will probably become a, a scenic road that people, uh, you know, travel down just for the beauty of the road. We have a program in Wisconsin called Rustic Roads. And you'll see these roads that there are no power lines down. It's just, they exist, you know, purely for the benefit of, of being able to see nature. And this is exactly the kind of road that would be designated. It would be paved then. Um, but yeah, it's the exact type of road you'd expect to see designated. Okay, and apparently I did an exceptionally good job over here because I'm not seeing really any bad slopes. 
I'm seeing a couple where maybe I could just improve it a bit, but for the most part, these are pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm pleased. So we went from absolute madness over here and whatever this was to uh, <laughs> some some pretty good slopes over here. So let, let's see. We've got these fires going. They're active. We're going to start running. For the rest of the build, we are running. In fact, I'm going to kick up the speed so we can see how our brakes work. So I already see a problem. Uh, there is nothing stopping this fire from working all the way around the mountain and then coming down this side because we're actually trapping the fire into our area. So the way to fix that would be to eliminate some of these trees down here. So I would assume that the forestry service would see this and already add a break. So this should prevent the fire from continuing to spread. And there would just need to be lots of targeted little areas like that. So let's go back in and take a look and I'll see if it stops now. Now in particular, I want to zoom in here because this is where things are going to get wild. Is it going to stop here or is it going to jump the water? Oh my goodness, with this new mod, they actually put it out. That is amazing. So the city is saved. <laughs> awesome. Well, with that in mind, let's start thinking about the rest of our build. And one of the things that I wanted to do was actually build... Uh, move our dump. I have it in the middle of this area. There were a lot of comments about how that seemed pretty unreasonable and I agree. And I also want to add another fire helicopter depot to this area. So we are going to turn our topographic view back on and find a good place to work this into our build. So I think that we're going to add the fire helicopter depot over here. And to me that's a fairly natural location for it. And then for our dump, I need to empty that unless I cheat. So I'll use move it. We'll bring that up to object height, actually terrain height rather. And then I just wanna add this in back here. There we go. Uh, so this to me is an okay spot. The one thing we need to do is make sure that our district covers this area now to keep these services serving this area. So Belmont has grown. <laughs> and now this, this uh, will serve only our development. So a good solution in my mind. So we're in a good spot here. I think that now it's time to start thinking about growing the city and then we'll work on regional transportation to end the episode. So what I'm thinking is we're just going to have a modest expansion right now. We're going to follow again the topography. This this episode is, is respect the topography. That That is what it is. So we're going to respect it somewhat. So it's not at all uncommon to see an old community's grids completely skipping reality. <laughs> just you, you have these grids that were platted out on a map. Uh, by someone in a faraway place who didn't understand the constraints of the area, but it's only a slight hillside. It'll work. And I I, I used roads that maybe I weren't the, the best solution. So I think I am going to go with just a, a standard two-lane road. We'll upgrade this dirt road here. We'll have sidewalks. Now, there's no parking on this street, I think. Yeah, that's not going to work. Now let's make sure we have water pipes underneath our road where they belong. Very good. Not looped, but it's okay. Ah, we gotta loop it. Redundancy underneath the river. <laughs> Perfect. And now you can see that our residential demand is through the roof. So I do want to plan some residential development here, but before we get to that, I want to think about what the community would see as its pride and joy. And what I'm thinking there is a path along the water. So back in the day, you'd have a lot of small towns that would kind of look at their waterfront, not from a, not from an enjoyment standpoint or a tourism standpoint, but, but rather as something that 
could be used to produce for them. So that's why you, you got things like paper mills along the water. It was a transportation corridor. It was very utilitarian in its use. But now you see these same small towns that have lost their mills going and retrofitting in multi-use paths and different, different things that really become a, a symbol of the community. And that is what we're gonna have here. This is gonna be a nice recreational path that everyone in the community loves and is proud of. And we'll break up this block as well, because that's a really long block. We'll break it up with a path. Now, interestingly, I was using a mod before, Electrics Road Tools, which I removed, I believe, or was it Node Controller that I was using? There we go, Node Controller. I could add a connection there to cross the street. I'll add one here as well. There we go. So that is a crossing. You just can't see it. That's kind of weird. Interestingly, marking is on it. It's just not working. Uh, that's okay. Oh, and we've got anarchy on. So we've got trees through this road. I should say we must have had anarchy on at one point because I don't have it on right now. Okay, we're good. And we're going to just zone this mostly for residential. I do want to have a node of commercial activity, kind of a neighborhood shopping center. Not that big, but just enough. There we go. And that, look, look at that growth. <laughs> Clearly what the community needed. Now, there was also a comment about how there were, there were no fences around these basketball hoops and that was a potential problem so there are some built into the asset but i agree it'd be nice to, to reinforce that a bit so we're going to add that now we don't have any kids hopping into the water going after their basketball and drowning so i also want to clean up the waterfront here a bit provide some views we'll keep some trees but we want some views here as well and i'll clear up some of the scrubby looking trees as well so some of the original nature, this is a wooded area after all. Ooh, missed power out here. So we're gonna wanna get that while I see it. There we go. And we've got this path over here, which was our fishing, <laughs> our fishing spot. This is a little extreme. I think we're gonna get rid of that. And now we will hopefully not have all the flooding issues. So um, the city's moving in the right direction in my mind. We're growing, got a bit of commercial activity, place to grab some barbecue. We're good, I like this, I like this a lot. So now I wanna strengthen the connections between this community and Ashland, but before we do that, <laughs> there we go again, our fires are still going. It's easy to forget, but there they are. Um, I wanna think about this connection. This is not a good connection. And actually, I could leave this running, but I'm not going to. So now that I've eliminated this, I just want it to be a very boring T-junction. The idea behind that, or a roundabout, depending on how traffic flows, this was over-engineered. I went a little uh, crazy on it, I think, and I don't want it to, to be over-engineered. So that will change everything here. We'll throw a stoplight in because there's really no priority over either of these movements. And we're going to see massive backups because we have no dedicated turning lanes. So let's work on that. Okay, so now we've got dedicated turn lanes and we're going to need to let this clear out. <laughs> Just every time I see it, <laughs> we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to add dedicated turn lanes in to the area and coming from it as well. I think we, I thought we had lights here, but we don't. I think we're going to add lights here as well. So our traffic is in a really rough spot. I don't know how well this is going to work. In fact, we have our dedicated lanes here. Why don't we just extend them at this point? And now at least we have a consistent right of way. You can always change striping. That's no problem. And you can see everyone's turning right. Interesting. Yeah, that's a challenge. And th that makes me wonder, 
if this would be a better spot to have a roundabout. So I think we are going to add a roundabout in here. Maybe we'll take this up to 60. And then we can take down these dedicated lanes. Whoa, unlocked. All right, our, uh, our, our lumber company is leveling up. So we can have a printing press now, which we're not gonna build in, in Brownsville or <laughs> Belmont. Uh, we're gonna build that somewhere else. So let's slow down for a second. We'll take our time because we need to improve this area. So we've got a pretty significant roundabout here. What I think we're going to do, we'll make our connections. We need to establish a T through here so we don't break the roundabout with what we're about to do. So I'm going to add ramps and then configure them. I'm not going to do intersection marking today, but I, I think that that's something that we're going to need to do in this area as well. Okay, now we'll get our directionality correct. It looks like most of them were okay. We can get rid of our T and our legs in. Now I want to fix the angle because uh, I want this to be a sweeping movement here so that you wouldn't have to turn. And I'm noticing one of the issues is that I have this extra lane out here. So it's making things look a little bit wonky. So we'll fix that. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Now we can just configure the roundabout using Traffic Manager. Boom, we're good. I like the speed's a little extreme, so we're gonna change that to, we're gonna drop this down to maybe 45. That's still really fast through a roundabout. So I click on that, I hold Shift, and I click it, and now it's 45 all the way throughout the roundabout. But at least your speed is decreasing as you approach the roundabout. And I'm hoping that this gets us moving quickly. You know, I said I wasn't going to use the lane marking tool, but I kind of want to. <laughs> so let's, let's go ahead and do that. Well, yeah, I think that looks a ton better with those markings and it just, it feels good and it's operating effectively and efficiently I like it. Now over here, this is less good. <laughs> yeah, you can see that there's not a lot of people who want to make this left-hand turn. We could probably use another roundabout here. Yeah, I might... I might actually change the junction here. And let's turn off that. We'll go back to just the stop sign here. Oh! Nah, <laughs> the high school's leveled up to level 4. Cool. And at least now, if someone's making a left here, they can make that. If they're making the right, it should be easy. Maybe to improve this. I wonder if we're flipping this. Actually, yeah. Everyone's going right. So I might actually do something a little bit hokey. And allow them to make that right-hand turn. With minimal issue. Now, there's a lot going on here. I want to clean some of this up. And what I want to clean up in particular, I only want this to be for lefts. I only want this to be for rights. This is straight. That's for rights. And this is already set for lefts, but I'm just going to, just for my own knowledge and benefit, we're going we're gonna to really make sure. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to do is look at what's happening here. We don't have people smoothly going through these, so let's improve that. Same thing here. And then it looks like I missed one over here with marking. There we go. So there's a lot of weaving movements going on here, a lot. And that is part of the problem that we're seeing here, but it could be worse, I think. <laughs> I don't know that it could be a lot worse, but it's it's pretty bad. But that got us up to 72, 73, and some of this is just it needs to clear out. So it might just take some time. And ultimately, the main problem we're having here is we're funneling all of our traffic. 
Um, and maybe part of what we could do to improve this would be to add a bus service. So uh, I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to add a bus depot to Ashland. And we're going to add this right next to our tram stop, much to the chagrin of the apartment dwellers over here. And I, I, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but we need to have some place to store our buses. And then I think we're going to add parking next to this. So that's a benefit to the bus depot uh, for the employees. You, you figure all the bus drivers are driving to work. Uh, there's more than six. <laughs> so <laughs> that should work. So I have this inner city bus stop uh, asset that I also added. And we're going we're gonna to give that a shot. It's, it's an interesting asset. It just invites inner city buses to a certain area. So where I think that makes the most sense is this downtown area. We've already got a massively full parking lot here. So I think we're going to use it as a park and ride, even though it's already full. So we'll have one stop there and then we're going to zoom way out, come in here and have another stop, maybe by the high school parking lot. And then we'll loop that right back around. And where this inner city bus comes in is I can add a stop anywhere that I want. So I'm going to place this so that I can move it myself. And I'm going to use move it to actually relocate this right here. So the buses should queue and pick people up right here at this other bus stop. So it should work quite well. So I'm very curious as to how many buses they're going to throw at this because I think it's going to be crazy. <laughs> Okay, seven, eight, 44. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing 44. Why don't we stick to something a little more rational? We'll go with 10 for now. That's still a lot. Man, the parking AI is not liking what I just did. Cars just flickering around. Are we gonna find a new normal? If I speed it up. If I zoom out. Hmm. So I think I might need to reset this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into here. We'll go into TMPE and we're gonna do something that I don't think I did to start out with, which was to actually clear the traffic. So I'm going to reset, remove park vehicles and see if that helps. Uh, I also kind of want to look at our policies that we have here. Um, so I like U-turns as, as a policy. We're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna allow them to turn at, at red lights. I think we're gonna leave it there. I also wanna ban private cars and trucks on bus lanes. That to me is just common sense. We'll see how that works. Yeah. Still doing the, the whole clicky thing, but I think we're in a, it seems like it's working a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> don't look at it. Don't look at it. That it's better. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm curious to see how well utilized this will be, but I think it's going to be a hit, um, at least from Belmont. So we've got our stop right here. There's already a guy waiting. Thank you, Bradley Finch. You're a low wealth adult tourist going to high school soccer field which just burnt down <laughs> you know it wouldn't be one of my builds if, it, if we weren't seeing that all right we're we're in a good spot there i think the very last thing i want to do is something that was suggested in the comments on numerous occasions and that is think about a truck stop <laughs> this is terrible yeah i really don't love what's happening here and i'm wondering we're going to build a truck stop in a second but i want to see if there's anything i can do to improve this and you see that they're obediently following the yield sign it's completely bungling traffic as a result part of this is they're not smoothly merging so that should help some but i'm wondering if this if they're yielding in a, in a, in a manner that's a bit extreme and if i just turn this on if that will improve things no, that was a mistake. You can see that now people are not providing the right of way. So we will get rid of that. We, we don't want people smoothly merging like that. It's just, 
a bit of a tricky situation with where this is. We're going to need to do something about that in the future to improve what's going on right here. And this just might be the end of uh, this as a, as a two lane road. We are at 75%, 74. I'd love, I'd really love to get that closer to, to 80, but we don't have any freeways. So all of our regional trips are occurring on these highways. So, you know, there, to, to a certain extent, I mean, I, I guess I don't know what more we could expect. Um, so for our truck stop, I do want to locate this in a place that would make sense. And what I'm seeing is that we have a place where we already have power and water service. We have water service going underneath this highway and we have power going up the side of the, uh, the road here. So I think that this would be a good location. I don't want to place this directly on the highway. So what we're going to do is build a frontage road. We're going to use this temporary road right here. I'm going to get this as close to the highway as I can. And then we'll 90 into it. And uh, so the road I think I'm going to use here is that one that I said was inappropriate to use earlier. And that's the one, the road that doesn't have parking. And then we will go in here. We'll add a stop sign. And then the truck stop I want to use is the one that comes with the Japanese creator pack. So this is that service station and restaurant. And I want to move this to center a bit better than it gave me. And that is great. I think we should have power. Yep. Water. Check. Check. There we go. We're good. And I think that it would be nice to add some trees here to buffer a bit. So we'll slow this down to one. We'll, we'll, we'll feel how it feels in reality. And now they're going to want to preserve some views so that people can see, but at the same time buffer a bit. And actually, I think that we are going to leave them with lots of visibility. And this would be a place where in the back, maybe you'd come and, and walk your dog a bit, let your dog go to the bathroom, and maybe just admire the water a little bit. So we're going to leave a spot there and look at the view here and open it up. Because now if you were standing here taking your dog out to do its business, you could get a nice view of the water. And that is, that's important. It's, it's the little things like that. So you'd still be able to see this coming down the road. And you know, I really would like to get some lower bushes in front of this. Uh, this wouldn't be something that anyone would be really negotiating in this location. It would be the county. And I would assume that the county is pretty, pretty lax about decoration and landscaping. There we go. So just liven it up. Yeah, I don't like that at all. <laughs> and I just disconnected the entirety of our... Ah, actually, I did not disconnect. So I thought that by removing this transmission line, I completely ruined things. But I did not. So we are taking some liberties here. This is a transmission line powering this little service station. Clearly, there would need to be some sort of improvement there. So let's... Let's fudge it a bit. So this will be our transformer here. The earthquake sensor. That'll do the trick. And while we're thinking about that, we need one over here as well. Going to... Going to Ashland. So we'll add a substation here as well. And that will be converting the power. And truthfully, this would probably fit a lot better over here. Actually, uh, no, it would not because it doesn't fit. We'll, we'll, we'll add it over here. That'll do the trick. Yeah, I like that. So now that makes our power complex a little bit more reasonable and believable. And I'm noticing a lot of queuing here as well. I think we're going to add in some lanes. Just as kind of our last... Whoops. Our last bit of, uh, bit of work that we're going to do to the city today. And here, this would absolutely warrant a traffic light. There's a lot of traffic going down here. And truthfully, this right-hand movement is probably the predominant movement anyway. So this will be a great benefit to the city. Traffic flow at 76. I think we're in a, in a better spot than we've been for a little while. And I'm, I'm pleased. I think that we have moved this... I think that we have moved the city 
in a, in a very positive direction. And I want to end it here, I think. So I hope that you've enjoyed this build. Uh, if you did, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the notification bell if you want to know when I release new content. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names here. They uh, continue to push me to make content and improve what I'm doing, and I appreciate them. And I appreciate you. Uh, even if you can't support me on Patreon, your likes, subscribes, shares, and views help grow the reach of the channel, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, I am going to leave you with a brief city tour, and we're going to start that right now. Mm -hmm.